Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the next episode of the Women's Fishing Network, brought to you by Ghost to Eleven Media. I am your Tuesday host, Amanda Weeb. You can find me on Instagram at Wild Girls Alberta. Uh, after today's segment, make sure you guys go and check out our new website, uh, womensfishingnetwork.com. Uh, you can check out all the host videos as well as our blog entries. And when you're done with that, make sure you check the store tab out and uh, go look at our store and pick up some really great gear. Um, and while we're on the topic of gear, today I'm going to touch on, uh, before we get into the meat and potatoes of the video anyways, I'm going to touch on uh, a couple of things that I've received recently from sponsors just to give you guys a look, see what you could uh, potentially be buying for yourselves when you go check out our store, fishingoutdoors.ca and or .net. So uh, hang out with me while I grab that stuff, give you guys a look, and then we're going to dive right into uh, the actual topic of today's segment. Awesome. So I was uh, incredibly fortunate this week and had um, a lot of surprises show up in my mailbox. Uh, we have super generous sponsors that uh, sent me some pretty, pretty sweet gear that uh, I'm pretty excited to get out on the water and try out. So the first package I received last week was from Anadromous Fly Company. Uh, they sent me um, a set of these absolutely beautiful hemostat scissors. Um, plier combo. Very cool. Um, I like to have a pair of hemostat pliers. Um, I'll often just clip them to my jacket when, I, when I'm fishing and then they're right uh, at hand. Super handy. Uh, this really sweet pair of sinker pliers. Um, you know, also obviously super handy. And uh, these really pretty line nippers, which uh, same kind of thing. I think I'll attach those to my tackle bag so that it's always within reach. Um, awesome for retying and stuff like that. Just be able to you know, nip your line off. And uh, something that I just think is really cool about all their stuff is that they have the, I'm assuming that's laser etched, their little logo on all their stuff. Uh, really beautiful. You can tell it's really high quality stuff. Um, yeah, make sure you guys check them out and grab some of their gear. Um, always good to have on hand. Uh, the next thing that got delivered to me um, also very lucky and uh, very excited for was a, a pretty decent order from Get and Hook Lures. Um, Clint and Kathy make absolutely beautiful stuff. Uh, make sure you guys are checking them out too. Just like a ton of absolutely beautiful spinners. All kinds of different patterns. Um, this really great red spoon. But I gotta show you guys what I think is just like the PS de resistance. Um, this <laughs> really cool uh, unique spinner. I've never seen anything like this before um, and it is, I just think, the neatest idea ever. So it's this beautiful spinner, but what's unique and cool about this spinner is that clumsy fingers. Come on. You can change the blade out um, and it comes with a, a variety of different patterns for these blades. So depending on what you're targeting, you know, you might have one pattern on, it's not working out. You can swap out to any number of these different blade patterns. Is that not just the neatest thing that you've ever seen? I am absolutely jacked to take this thing out on the water and uh, chase after some fish with it. Um, and last but not least, ow, delivered fresh off the press today is our newest sponsor, True North Baits. Um, you guys may know our uh, Friday host, Nikki, is uh, new to the Women's Fishing Network, and she brought with her, her and her husband's amazing company, True North Baits. Uh, they make incredible soft plastics. They have a ton of different varieties, like insane amounts of color patterns. You guys definitely got to check them out. Um, I do believe we have a discount code, which will be linked in the bottom, in the description. They sent me even some terminal tackle, which I'm super stoked for. Uh, so these really great net heads. The 3.5 inch rippers, which are essentially a paddle tail swim bait in a variety of colors. These things are gonna do so well out here. Uh, chasing pike and walleye, I am pretty excited. Uh, these three and a half inch spikes, again, in a variety of different colors. I think these are gonna work really great for open water for the rest of the season, but I think these are gonna be absolutely deadly when it comes to ice season. And then we have some runts, 
in a variety of colors as well. These are two inches. Again, I think these would just absolutely slay for perch and trout, especially in the ice season. And lastly, the <coughs> meh fly nymph. Take off, eh? Take off! To the great white north. Take off! It's a beauty way to go! In a two inch variety pack as well. These things, I'm gonna open this up and show you guys one of these. They're so pretty. Um, the mold that they have for this is just beautiful. Look at that thing. I'd eat that. I'm no, I'm not gonna do that. But you guys should definitely pick some of this stuff up and uh, you know, put a hook in it and chuck it out in the water. So yeah, those were my, were my deliveries this week. Um, yeah, again, thank you so much to our sponsors. Um, I'm incredibly touched and uh, super appreciative that you guys sent us this stuff. Uh, we are very, very lucky and uh, I can't wait to uh, go out and get into some fish with all of this new gear. That being said, that part of the video is uh, concluded and we are gonna get into uh, the important, more important, less important, I don't know, part of today's video. I'm gonna show you guys how to rig up a rod with line and we're gonna discuss some of the different types of line, uh, you know, pros and cons, uh, some of the details and uh, help you guys make informed decisions the next time you go to purchase some line to rig up a rod. So here we go. So when you are choosing to reline your reel or put line on a new reel, uh, there's a couple of considerations to be made. Uh, things you're gonna wanna think about are line memory, stretch, uh, shock resistance, abrasion resistance, visibility, buoyancy. There's a lot. Uh, there are typically four types of line that you're choosing from which would be monofilament, fluorocarbon, copolymer, and braid. They all kind of have their own, you know, pros and cons to each of them. But uh, I'm gonna highlight a couple of the important things of each of those lines to help you guys make an informed decision. So we are gonna start off with monofilament. Uh, people usually call it mono. It is a, a single line made of nylon usually. Um, it's been around since the 1930s. It's kind of the bread and butter um, for fishing line. Fantastic for beginners. Um, some of the pros about monofilament is that it is uh, very low line memory. It's got a lot of stretch in it. Um, it's recyclable, which is super cool when you have a rat's nest or whatever, you can just snip it off and recycle it. Um, it's cheap, it's easy to use. Uh, it's really easy to do knots in. Um, it's fairly buoyant, which can be a pro, but it can also be a con. It's great for top water, um, not so great for doing bottom baits and stuff like that. Um, I would say kind of the cons for monofilament is um, it's not as durable as other fishing lines. Um, it wears a little bit quicker and uh, it's not quite as strong as other fishing lines. Um, so it's great for you know specific styles of fishing, but uh, once you're getting into the little bit heavier stuff, you might wanna step your game up a little bit. Okay, so moving on to fluorocarbon. Uh, fluorocarbon is very similar to monofilament, uh, just a little bit more dense. Um, it came onto the scene kind of in the 70s, and back then it was very uh, tough and stiff, and so it was often used uh, as material for leaders, but it has obviously come a long way since then. Um, some of the pros of using fluoro is that uh, it's practically invisible, so it's fantastic in clear water conditions, um, really uh, abrasion resistant. Um, it has a high shock absorbency, but maintains its sensitivity. So you're really feeling those bites with the fluoro. Uh, kind of the downsides of it are that uh, it has a high memory. So when you spool a little bit of line out and you see that coil retention, that's high line memory. Um, knots can fail pretty easily with fluoro and it's a little bit more pricey than monofilament. Um, but that being said, um, it's great for using in bait casters. You don't typically want to use it in a spin cast reel. Um, it's a fast sinking line. So you're using it for a lot of bottom baits, jig fishing, stuff like that. So those are things to consider when you are choosing uh, fluorocarbon. So up next, we're gonna talk about copolymer, uh, which is very similar to mono. However, it is kind of the new and improved uh, where mono is made up of just nylon. Copolymer is made up of a couple different ingredients. You know, everyone has their own mix. Uh, what's cool about 
copolymer is that it's stronger and more resistant than mono. Um, it's great for casting, great for knots, super strong and durable, has a ton of stretch but maintains its strength, uh, really low memory. Uh, the only kind of downside that I'm seeing about copolymer is that it's quite expensive. It's kind of the, the Ferrari of fishing line, if you will. Um, so if you are uh, into spending a ton of money on a uh, fishing line that you usually change out every year, that's uh, definitely the way to go. So finally, we come to braid. Uh, braid is made by weaving uh, multiple fibers together. Um, braid is made to last. It is the strongest line pound for pound that you can buy. Um, it has no memory, no stretch, um, low shock strength. Um, the only real downsides for braid is that uh, it's very visible. Uh, so you're not wanting to use that in clear water conditions. Where I am, it's perfect because it's usually pretty murky out here. Um, it's expensive. It's uh, hard to tie knots in. Um, but it's really great for low visibility water. When you need uh, a ton of line on your reel, it's uh, a great line to use. And uh, I find out here when I'm fishing in high veget vegetation water, um, it's great for that. It cuts through vegetation like nothing. Um, it's super strong, so you know it's not gonna snap you off on weeds or you know a good solid bite. Um, and it is definitely my preferred fishing line. Um, and that being said, that is what I will be using today to uh, line this reel. Um, I did purchase a new fishing rod recently. I like to have multiple backups. I like to have backups for my backups. Um, anybody that knows me uh, knows that I'm pretty tough on rods and I have snapped several this year. So uh, when I see a good sale, I'm not gonna pass it up. So uh, hang out with me. I'm gonna uh, put some line on this reel and uh, show you guys how to do that. Show you guys uh, how to set your drag. A uh, couple of little things. Okay, so recently on sale, I picked up this Quantum Iron Fire. It's a 6.6 medium fast action rod. Um, it's this really pretty matte black color, which I like. So yeah, we're gonna show you guys how to uh, line this thing with fishing line. I picked up this Berkley X5 braid. It's a 20 pound test, which I like because I'm chasing after some uh, bigger predatory species. I just like to be sure that I'm not gonna snap off. So I'm gonna show you guys a cool trick that uh, I saw online. But first things first, I'm gonna get this bad boy started. You always wanna start from your top down. Make sure that you open up your bale and then you're gonna tie your knot around your spool. I'm gonna show you guys my personal little trick because my knots aren't always the greatest. Um, I don't find that I can get it very tight when I'm going around the spool. So I just kind of tie a couple simple overhand knots. Nip off that tag end because you don't need it. And if you're lucky like me, you've got fancy new nippers from an Adramus fly company. And what I like to do is the little sticker that comes on your new spool of line, I'll just take a little piece of that off. E. And I'll actually stick it on my line, on my spool, so that it can't spin around. And now, gotten that started. You're ready, technically, to start spooling your line. So it's nice to have a partner when you're uh, spooling your line to hold the spool for you and keep tension on it. However, I recently saw a cool trick um, for doing it yourself without having any kind of fancy tools. All you need is a pair of Crocs, which uh, I am so fortunate to have. So you take a pencil or a pen, you put it through the hole for your line, and then you put the pencil into your Crocs. This allows you to 
start spooling, you can uh, adjust the tension yourself, which is a little harder than I thought it would be. And there we go. These uh, some clever nuances. There we go. Now we got her on the run. You just reel till your heart's content. Hands free. Look at that. Something that I've done uh, previously before learning better was not putting enough line onto my spool. Um, it really affects the quality of your cast. You're getting shorter casts and uh, you're burning through your line a lot quicker. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure you're putting enough line on there. We're going to fast forward through this part. So at this point everybody kind of has their own personal touch. What I like to do is uh, put my rod together and uh, fish my line all the way through. I like to tie my leader on right away um, and then my rod's just ready to go. So we are going to do exactly that. Bear with me as I have not so nimble fingers. I'm also not wearing my glasses. Oops. Okay. I have on me a uh, Mustad fluorocarbon leader. I like using the fluoro leaders. Uh, they're see-through. You know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, braid is quite visible in the water, but having that uh, floral leader on there gives you that little bit of discretion in the water. They all want to count at the same time. Who wouldn't? But I only need one. So if you want to come in nice and close here, I'm going to show you guys the knot that I use. So you feed your tag in through the eyelet. And I like to go pinch and create a little loop there, and I go around five or six times. Uh, the bigger the species you're targeting, the more knots or loops you can do. You take that tag end, you go back through the loop that you created. You can see you create this loop here. You bring that tag through that loop too. And you snug it up. I like to give it a couple test tugs. You get you got yourself a nice beautiful knot there. And then you're gonna take your nippers and nip off that little tag end. Uh, you don't want to leave a big tag, it just adds to the visibility. It adds to your ability to uh, hook into weeds and other debris in the water. And there you have it. You've got your uh, leader attached. You are uh, officially rigged and ready to go now. Um, something that I do like to check before I take my reel out onto the water is the drag. Um, everyone sets drag to their preference. It's all dependent on what species you're targeting, how uh, high or low you want that drag set. Um, technically, you're supposed to set your drag with uh, a scale uh, according to, I think it's like either half or one third of the suggested uh, line strength. But uh, I just like to set it by hand. Um, your drag on a spinning reel is this little uh, spindle located at the top that makes that super fun clicking noise. Um, the tighter you turn it to the right, the tighter your drag is. Uh, the more you turn it to the left, the looser your drag is. Um, I like to start off by setting it really loose and then just doing little quarter turns and adjusting. Uh, because I'm chasing species like pike, I like to have my drag set um, kind of somewhere in the middle I don't want it too loose because you can definitely miss a hook set with that, but you don't want it too tight either because they can then snap you off. It's kind of the intended purpose behind drag is to keep you from snapping off when you get a good bite. Uh, so yeah, it's a good idea to always kind of test and check your drag, make sure it's set uh, somewhere in the middle, um, and then you can kind of adjust as you go. Uh, a lot of these cheaper reels, um, you don't want to really be adjusting it when you're mid-fight. Uh, it can damage a lot of the components on the inside. 
Um, so it's definitely a good thing to uh, set and check before you make your first cast. Well, that is going to be uh, it for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning into this segment. Um, I hope that it was helpful to you. I hope you guys learned something uh, and that you can take some of the knowledge that I've passed on and apply it to your own fishing lives. Um, thank you so much to Ghost to 11 Media for helping us put this on. Uh, we appreciate it so much. Thank you so much to our sponsors. Um, I'm sure you guys saw, uh, I definitely hit the jackpot this week uh, with new fishing gear. Um, we're super lucky and uh, it's really great stuff. So make sure you guys are going to fishingoutdoors.ca or .net if you are out of the country. Uh, grab some of this stuff for yourselves. I don't know what you guys are waiting for. It's just, you know, fantastic, hot stuff. Get it. Um, yeah, so thank you so much again for tuning in. Make sure you're checking out the website, womensfishingnetwork.com. Read those blogs, watch those videos, check out the other girls' segments uh, this week. You know, you can always look forward to the other girls putting up some bangers. Uh, thank you again. We love you guys so much. Make sure you guys are uh, interacting in the comment section with us. We love hearing from you. We love your input and your opinions. And uh, I'll see you next Tuesday.